that bitch. Yo, Percocet, Miley Percocet, Percocet. Future, one of the hottest American rappers with hits like What a Time to Be Alive, Bum Tam Tam, and Mask Off, has been declared as the future of music by Billboard. However, in the beginning, he was just a young boy who got introduced to music through his cousin. This is his story, from staying on the streets to becoming arguably the most influential rapper of this generation. Having such an extraordinary personal life is just another thing that contributes to making this man so fascinating. Although he's facing some legal issues with both Jessica Smith and Sierra, mothers of two of his children, and he's not exactly smooth sailing right now, it's still safe to say his contribution to the music industry is undebatable. I mean, like, it really can't be, not after 8 solo albums, 19 solo mixtape, a collaborative album, and way more. Let's not forget about what's not here yet, and I guess it's pretty safe to say an artist streamed over 30 billion times worldwide has met the criteria for success. This guy also owns the title King of Atlanta. Think about how many rappers he's up against to get that title. This guy's something serious. He has a very deep and long influence in the hip-hop landscape, creating his own sound and turning that sound into one of the most dominant styles in rap. Future is both an elder and still one of the hottest out there. The youth is still always on the lookout for more music from him. The list of rappers hot in the game for this long is very short. Let's look into his history and find out if he really deserves to be named King of Atlanta. This is the story of Novadius Damon Wilburn, aka Future. Actually, his last name's Cash now. Novadius was born on November 20th, 1983 in Atlanta, Georgia, in a family of street hustlers. After being abandoned by his father, Future was raised by his mother with help from his aunts and uncles. Growing up in Kirkwood, which is an area that was highly affected by the crack epidemic in the 80s and 90s, just that alone should tell you Future's childhood wasn't normal. It was filled with so much guns, drugs, and crime, it got so bad he even remembers junkie school. In conversation, Future actually mentioned that he remembers a junkie named Fred who used to drive him to school on a regular basis. He says the intense danger of growing up in such an environment is something he never wants his kids to ever deal with. I mean, what parent would? His life wasn't easy. He was shot in the right hand at only 14 years old. I've been shot. I've been everything. You've been shot? Yeah, I've been shot. But at the end of the day, you know, where did you get shot? I shot in my hand. In your hand? Yeah, when I was a teenager. But then I lived from there. I was a beast after that. After I get shot, I, would, I went mentally just like... Relationship he had with his mother wasn't good either. From between the ages of 17 and 24, he had no bonding with his mom whatsoever. The connection between the two only improved when he stopped hustling in the streets to focus on music. Someone's childhood almost always influences their future, and future was no different. The overwhelming impact drugs had on his music was evident, since it was just something he could never escape, and this was often delivered through his music. The most prominent of them all had to be lean. This drug was both his muse and his preoccupation. It's ingrained in his music. And when I say ingrained, I mean to the extent that he was afraid to let his fans know that he quit. He just assumed that they would react negatively. When collabing with Juice World, another young artist, he had actually told Future that listening to his music is what inspired him to start drinking lean. And Juice was only in middle school at the time. When Future heard this, he said it bothered him. It bothered him a lot. It made him wonder out loud how many of the 6th graders that I influenced to drink lean. While in Columbia High School, even though he never finished and dropped out his senior year, Future became a fan of Shakespeare. He said when I went to school, I would just read Shakespeare, and I just fell in love with how he mixed his words. I started playing around, writing poems, reading poems. This element definitely played his part in making Future an excellent lyricist. His interest in rap really began when he met up with his cousin Rico Wade at a family member's funeral. Since he was abandoned by his biological father, he really saw Rico as a father figure. With one foot still in the streets, the meeting at the funeral led to Nevadius to hang out with the legendary Dungeon family. This introduction to the studio life is where it all began. A key moment Future was deeply inspired was watching Andre 3000 freestyle a verse for a 2014 song, I Can't Wait. Leather in the summer, silk in the Being in the studio with not only the company of the Dungeon family members, Goody Mob, Killer Mike, and Bubba Sparks, but also outside artists like Trey Songs and Tally B. Quelly, he was for sure to be influenced. Future really began learning and making music under their wing. Rico is the one who encouraged Future to really hone his writing skills and make a career out of rapping. This new interest in music is what took him off the streets. He started seeing that people who were also from the same streets were living a better life. After this realization, he started thinking to himself, I can take this serious. So between 2010 and 2011, 
he released a series of mixtapes titled A Thousand, Dirty Sprite, True Story, and all three of these titles had an incredible run on the underground Atlanta rap scene. Even though he wasn't mainstream yet, slowly but surely his name was growing as an underground artist. In late September of 2011, he signed a major record deal with Epic Records and L.A. Reid, who had actually previously worked with Rico Wade's production crew as well. In the beginning, almost everybody doubted him. They never thought he'd ever be a leading artist in the hip-hop industry. See, before being known as Future, he was Meathead, basically known as the outcast of the Dungeon family, who everyone thought was just more interested in hustling in the streets than actually making music. Of course, this is before he released the mixtapes that shut the underground Atlanta rap scene down. At this point, he had so much hype that DJ Drama once said every club DJ had to play Future for at least 30 minutes to keep the party going. Before releasing his debut album, he released a mixtape called Astronaut Status. This mixtape didn't do too well compared to his previous ones, but Future never got demotivated. His debut album Pluto was released in April 2012. It included remixes of his hit song 20 Montana featuring Drake and Magic featuring T.I. Magic actually went on to become his first ever single to hit Billboard 100. He started collaborating with artists like Rihanna, Snoop Dogg, R. Kelly, and many other big names. Future released a mixtape on January 15, 2013 named FBG. This mixtape earned huge success having over 250,000 downloads on the mixtape site That Piff and was certified as platinum. Later in 2013, he announced plans of releasing a new album, Future Hendrix, but in April 2014, the album was instead released under the name Honest. Honest was a commercial flop. Despite featuring artists like Kanye West, Rihanna, Sierra, Drake, Kelly Rowland, Jeremiah, Diplo, and Andre 3000, and amongst many others, the album still flopped. By the time Honest was released, Future's music was highly anticipated on a mainstream scale. So even though Honest went on to be a gold album and technically did pretty damn good, for future standards, this just wasn't good enough. From hardcore rap fans and blogs, the response was just so mediocre. Future's response to the rap community not liking the album too much, he said, Honest, I wasn't quite honest. This was him responding to the album's underwhelming sales while also dealing with the rumors of a split between him and his former fiance Sierra. This was the beginning of a slump. But Sierra, on the other hand, was having great success with hits like Body Party, co-written with Future. The song ended up going double platinum. Their son, Future Sierra Wilburn, was born in 2014. But unfortunately, their love life came to an end when they broke off their engagement because of Future's inability to stay loyal. Later, Sierra started dating her now husband, Russell Wilson. This was a really hard time for Future. He began retreating from the public eye and went back to Georgia and started working non-stop. But forging his own path is something Future always excelled at. He wasn't about to stop here. Between 2014 and 2015, he re-emerged with a load of classic mixtapes. Monster, Beast Mode, and 56 Nights. And the last one featuring March Madness, which at the time became one of the biggest hits of his career. Epic Records and CEO Sylvia Rome said he's so prolific and so dedicated to his craft that he lives in the studio. He's understated in many ways. Even though he started his career way early in 2010, his first major breakthrough was his next hit album, DS2, which came out July of 2015. Immediately after this breakthrough release, since the release of the Glee soundtracks in 2010, in 2017, he surprised his fans by releasing two albums back to back, Life Is Good and his 2022 album, I Never Liked You. Ever since his music career took off, Features earned so many nominations for himself in various categories, and countless award functions too. Alongside Drake, he won the Best Group Award at BET Awards in 2016. The genre Futures become a major part of also gave him his due of recognition. Previously, he's already won the BET Award twice. First in 2014 for his song Move That Dope, and second in 2015 for the song 56 Nights. Also in 2015, Much Music Awards presented him with the Best Hip Hop Video Award for the song DNF. This award he shared with P. Rain and Drake. Among the best selling musicians out there, Future stood out after winning the Grammy Award for the Best Rap Performance for the song King's Dead, alongside Kendrick Lamar, J Rock, and James Blake. These awards show you proof of true success. People believe Future may have really taken it a step too far when he traded his last name from Wilburn to Cash, though. 
Nah, I mean, the guy's name is literally Nevadius Demon Cash now. Over the past decade, the 38-year-old Atlanta rapper has not only manufactured a sound that continues to conquer modern hip-hop, but he's also become synonymous with a jazzy lifestyle that comes with it. You know, the strip clubs, the jumbo jets, the beautiful women, the lavish lifestyle, drinking champagne on exotic islands, all of that defines Future. And let's not forget about the drugs he doesn't do. On set for a cover shoot, Future once ordered everything on the menu. He simply said, when you work to earn something, you understand it in a different way. Future success could also be credited to the fact that he does exactly what he wants to when he wants to. Future has a real gift when it comes to his will and his ability to influence other people. I mean, this guy made trap music as popular as twerk anthems before we even knew we needed it. He also made great use of autotune in his song, singing and rapping with the perfect combination. GQ even stated in 2014 that he's managed to reboot the retired autotune sound, mashing it into something entirely new. Another style of music that we can give him full credit for is the quote-unquote mumble rap. His song, Tony Montana, is what really popularized mumble rap. He paved the way for a completely new rap style. Tony Montana, Rappers like Migos, Lil Uzi Vert, Young Thug, Lil Pump, Gucci Mane, Chief Keef have all become so popular because of this new quote-unquote mumble rap genre. Future's even been referred to as the Beyonce for guys. Just because he's on a creative level that very few could reach up to. This guy has so many different alter egos and flows, it's just hard to pin them down. There's Future Hendrix, the Rockstar, Super Future, The Workhorse, The Wizard, Fire Marshall, Caesar Lee. These are all unmistakably Future. He often talks about how he wants to inspire people. He's trying to make productive changes in his own life and is determined to carry himself like more of a role model. Maybe what happened to Juice World gave him a little more perspective on things. Change is always scary, but this Future isn't the same one who released Honest several years back. He's wiser, more experienced as a person, and has a better grasp on his art as well as the world around him. The artist who's never afraid to spell out his own wrongdoings inspires us to be true to ourselves when he says, Every mistake you make allows you to be honest because what's in the dark will eventually come to light, so it's better to just be truthful about it. I still find it kind of funny coming from a guy who admits to lying to every woman who comes in his life, but it's good advice nonetheless. Anyways, that concludes this one. If there's a particular artist you'd like to see next, let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Alright y'all, artist out. Peace.